the iPhone 6. Apple's newest iPhone with a better camera and better video features. But with its polished finish and slick curves, will the iPhone 6's iSight camera truly function as well as Apple's marketing campaign would like us to believe? It's time to find out on MGP TV. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Marco Gutierrez here with Marco Gutierrez Photography and I got a fun one for you today. So here's the thing, I finally made the switch to the iPhone. I've actually never owned an iPhone before and I know some people find it a little weird. It's like, well, you're a photographer, you're a cinematographer, how do you not have an iPhone? I'm not a cell phone reviewer, but I am going to be looking at this through the eyes of a photographer and cinematographer, seeing how good the camera is. So we're going to take a look at the video feature and the photography feature because, well, the iPhone is kind of the photography standard when it comes to cell phone cameras and so I'm actually really excited to try it out and see uh, see uh, see what it can do. Okay so one of the cool features about this camera actually is that and this is something I actually do appreciate about iPhone. If you go back to the iPhone 4, 4S all the way up to this current iPhone 6 you'll notice that the 8 megapixel camera has stayed 8 megapixels throughout the entire line. Now some people may be wondering it's like well couldn't you get a Samsung or one of these other Android phones or Windows phones that have much higher megapixel counts? But Apple took a rather unique approach. They wanted to improve the quality of the pixels as opposed to the quantity of the pixels. And so that's something I'm going to be testing out. This is one of the reasons I'm actually really excited about this phone. Because what's important to me as a photographer is not the number of pixels, but how good each pixel really is. Now, I've got, um, I've got my... One of my favorite little cameras, this is a, an Olympus Pen, and I'm actually going to be using this as my little test subject because one of the other features about this camera is something called phase focusing. It's actually a hybrid system in the, uh, in the iPhone. It's got a little bit of um, the traditional contrast focusing system, and they've added uh, a little bit of the phase focusing system that's found in these much more expensive DSLRs. And the question I'm wondering is, well, does it really focus that much faster? Now, to be, to be fair though, I'm in like really ideal lighting conditions right now. I'm outdoors in this beautiful day, so chances are the focusing system is gonna work as good as it can, but I figured it's a good test to go up against, you know, my uh, trusty DSLR here. So let's take a look. Now, one of the things I wanted to test is the focusing to see how quickly this thing focuses, so. Let's do this. I'm going to focus on the background. There we go. And then we're going to focus on here. So here we go. There we go. It's actually not too bad. Okay, so right now because I'm using live view, this camera is actually going to be using contrast uh, detection, which is the old school sort of way of doing things. As you can see that it's pretty quick. Um, I threw the lens as far out of focus as I could. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the background. Boom. And now I'm going to focus on the camera. Okay, so we just took a look at what it's like for the iPhone 6's hybrid focusing system does in comparison to a DSLR's contrast focusing system. Now I know, DSLRs actually use phase focusing, but in order for me to use my DSLR in live view mode, it was actually using contrast focusing because the phase focusing pixels are located on the mirror and the mirror is locked up in order to let me use live view. But even in contrast focusing mode, my DSLR performs significantly faster than the iPhone 6. And just for fun, I decided to see how fast phase focusing works on my camera, and it came out to 0.2 seconds. So does an iPhone 6's hybrid focusing system compare to a DSLR? No. But then again, look at it this way. You're probably never going to be focusing on something that far away to something that close, or vice versa. In fact, as soon as you open up the camera app, the camera immediately starts looking for things to focus on. And if it finds the subjects that you want to focus on, that means you're going to be able to take your picture within about three quarters of a second, which is extremely respectable. Okay, now it's time to find out how the quality of the iPhone 6 really holds up. And to do that, I invited my beautiful friend Camaria to come out and do a shoot with me. So let's go take a look. Okay, so I guess the first thing we gotta take a look at is the camera app. And uh, 
you know, not not a whole lot's changed from iOS 7 to iOS 8. I'm going to use it the same way most most people would use it. Um, what I'm going to test right now is actually the contrast. Uh, we've got really bright sunlight and low shadows, so we're going to take a look at how this fared. So this is actually a really good example of what the iPhone 6 is capable of doing. I'm actually really impressed with what's happening here. My lovely friend Camaria, you can see she's got very light hair, and I'm using the sunlight to create a little separation by creating some rim light around the edge here. And the iPhone 6 is actually holding detail in her hair and along her shirt and shoulder. Um, this is fantastic. I did not expect that. However, if you look at the next picture... You'll notice I lost all that wonderful highlight detail. There's no detail here. There's no detail here. There's no detail here. And even the green bench back here has lost so much detail as it's blending into the ground. So from picture to picture, the exposure is not going to be consistent. So watch out for that. If you can shoot in manual, I'd highly recommend it so you can hold detail in the highlights and shadows. So in this next picture, I gave the camera a little bit more of a challenge. She's in deeper shadow now. And the camera did sort of compensate for the brighter highlights that happen when you put somebody in deeper shadow. But it's still enough to where it opened up the shadows enough to where I got nice, nice, even detail in, uh, in her face. Her skin tones still look really natural. Um, it just did a fantastic job here. I would have liked to see a little more detail in her hand and arm. But, you know, again, this is a cell phone camera, so that's probably asking a bit much. <laughs> Over here, this is probably my pet peeve of the camera so far. The JPEG compression of the iPhone is really high. In fact, you can see I lost a lot of detail in her eye, lost a lot of detail in her hair, lost a lot of detail in the leaf and in the background. Um, there's really no excuse for this, actually. Uh, there is so much more information you can get out of this 8 megapixel camera, but because of the high compression, uh, I just lost it all, so it gets really muggy. This is sort of an ideal lighting situation. I had a cloud come overhead, and so I've got this nice, even lighting. And it was a good chance to test out the camera's performance in terms of color. And you can see her skin tones are very nice, very natural. Still kept a lot of detail in her shirt, and even the giant leaf that she's holding looks fantastic. There's nice shadow detail. There's nice highlight detail. Overall, this is fantastic and shows what the camera can do under ideal conditions. This is sort of another ideal lighting situation. You know, I've got nice sunset happening here. And to add a little bit of a challenge, I've got this nice glossy white camera. And I was really surprised to see how well it held those highlights. There is nice detail in these highlight edges while still maintaining plenty of detail in the shadows. Now, some people have been wondering, is the iPhone 6 actually able to replace your DSLR? And the simple answer is no, it's not. And here's what's happening here. My DSLR is on the right, the iPhone 6 is on the left, and to make my DSLR match sort of the conditions that the iPhone is shooting, I had to dumb it down. And that in itself should tell you that if you have to dumb down the camera, then it's definitely not a replacement for that camera. I'm shooting at 4 megapixels with my DSLR. And even at 4 megapixels, well, look uh, closely here. You can see I've got a lot of detail in the vegetation. I've got some nice crisp edges. This looks fantastic. I've got plenty of contrast. Whereas if I go to the iPhone, you'll notice all my detail here is completely muggied. You know, I've got this nice 8 megapixel camera, but that compression is just killing it. Also, the colors aren't quite as vivid. It's still a good picture on its own. You know, if I didn't have this one to compare it to, you'd probably look at this one and say, hey, that's a pretty good photo. In this one, I was messing around with my DSLR settings and uh, sort of warming up the white balance, which is one of the things that you can do with, with your DSLRs. You can program it to behave in certain ways. But uh, in this case, the default setting from the iPhone actually did a much better job. And you can see, again, it held nice detail in the highlights. It's got a little bit of nice shadow detail there, but again, that compression just kills it. So I don't know what the deal is with that or if there's a way to change it. But you know what? 
just like the old adage says, you know, the best camera you have is the one that's with you. So you really can't beat that. And it is a good phone. It takes good pictures. Um, and it takes really nice, clear video as well. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time. Good beer.